Hi you guys! Welcome back to First Impression Friday. Today we are taking a look at Sewing and the City, an indie uh, sewing pattern company that also provides sewing inspiration and courses to teach you how to sew as well. So she's got a free fashion sewing guide as you can see here. She's also got sewing patterns, which of course we're going to take a look at today. Something called a stitch playbook, uh, maybe a surging course, something about hacking, making masks. Um, she's got a lot of really, really great information <clears throat> for beginners and experienced um, sewists alike. Um, it does seem to have a lot of helpful information um, in terms of you know, discovering your personal style and then how to execute that and, and all of that. So really beautiful website. <clears throat> She's got a pretty healthy blog. She hasn't posted this year. Um, so I'm not sure if that's something she's going to keep up with or not. Um, but her name is Christine. She's worked in fashion like her adult, her entire adult career um, in New York and Los Angeles. So I kind of feel like I'm getting the vibe that she has like her finger on the pulse of what is trendy and cool and things that we are going to want to sew and wear for years and years. So let's take a look at these sewing patterns without further ado. If you're new here though, hello, my name is Lindsay. Welcome. You have landed on one of the most fun videos that I post, it's First Impression Friday. We literally sit down and look at sewing patterns together. We take a look at the entire collection of one designer or one release, depending on how the company um, releases their patterns. Um, and just like chat about it. Talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, fit, fabrication, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, drop a comment if you would. Introduce yourself so that I can get to know you a little better. I read all the comments. It's my favorite thing. Um, and for everyone else, of course, give this video a like. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and do that as well. Really helps me out, helps new people find my channel each and every day. Um, so we can all have like a little bit more fun here. All right, so the first pattern is the Essex dress pattern. It is an easy fitting pullover dress with deep V-neck, gathered shoulders with ruffle sleeves, an elastic waist with side seam pockets and above the knee hem. Yes. Okay. A little hard to tell from this fabric what we've got going on here. Hopefully we've got some line drawings or something else, but let's take a look through this little section that she has here. So this is a repeat of what it says up here and then more information. The back neck and sleeves are finished with bias tape, pullover style so no buttons or zippers, so versatile and can be worn with sandals as a casual summer look or with heels as a chic special occasion dress. Sews up beautifully in your favorite artist drawn prints and solids alike. Um, her downloadable PDFs are suitable for printing in AO, coffee shop, and then A4 and US letter. Um, the AO is two pages and 26 if you print at home. Fabrics are light to medium weight wovens with a bit of body. That's pretty specific. Okay, cotton poplin, cotton poly blends, denim and linen. Right, okay, good. And then the notions that you need, thread, two and a half yards of three quarter inch elastic. That must be for the waist cinching. We'll look at that. And then three yards of double fold bias tape. And then she even tells you made from one inch bias strips because that, that math can get confusing sometimes. And then here is her pattern chart, not very big, but her bust, this is a body measurement chart. So the bust is from 32 inches up to 46, and the hip is 35 to 49. So not the best we've seen, certainly not the worst we've seen either. Um, sort of encapsulates, you know, straight to mid sizes. Um, maybe some of you that wear plus sizes, uh, would fit into the largest size here but for reference if I'm remembering correctly I would fall into like a 10 at the bust a 
like 14 at the waist and then a 20 for the hip. So I'm kind of all over the place here. So it would really depend on the style of the dress and the wearing ease um, that would determine which sizes I would make. <clears throat> all right. So let's take a look at Essex a little bit closer. Let's see. Can we zoom in? Yes. All right. Not, oh wait, can you make it bigger? Nope. Oh, yes. Okay. Very big. Very big, but I can't scroll up or down. Um, so what you see <laughs> is what we get here. I don't know how to, yeah, even when I click on it, nothing happens. All right. Oh, and then it goes back small again. All right, really not helpful to use this little doodad here. But you can see we've got the really big sleeve. I think this is just like an extra little flounce that's added on. And is this a surplus bodice with um, an elastic casing here? And then pleating maybe? I don't know. It's kind of hard to see. There it is with a cute leather jacket, styled up with little heels. Yes, these are all really beautiful pictures. Again, still hard to see though what the construction or what the actual design of this is. You can see there though that the wrong side of your fabric does show from the side. So I don't think this looks too, too bad. Um, but if that you know certainly bothers you, then you would need to get a fabric that um, that you like the way it looks on both the right side and the wrong side. All right, this is a little bit easier to see. Let's see if we can zoom in on this one and tell what's going on here. All right, so we have a deep V, but it has a center front seam. It doesn't actually cross over. You do have this little like curved flounce where it's thinner down here and wider up at your shoulder. There's also some kind of shoulder gathers, and then it goes into two rows of pretty thick elastic um, then from there, it's just an A-line skirt, side seam pockets, and like a mid-thigh hem. Here is the back. Pretty straightforward here, too. I don't see anything really funky in terms of fit. I mean, maybe, maybe this is drooping down a little bit, but that is just being like over the top picky. Okay, pictures with dogs. We can't ignore that. Super cute. Um, I just want to, she's sitting down here. So we hardly ever get photos of people sitting down in their clothes. And you can tell because this fabric is a little bit more structured. Um, when she sits down, it kind of pulls away from the body a little bit just because the fabric is more structured than her actual body is. Does that make sense? So it is pulling away from the body a little bit. Might make some of you a little bit self-conscious because I imagine she can see down. <laughs> Even though we can't see anything, she can probably see down. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. It's not difficult to raise this if you're worried about this super deep V. Um, and then again, I want to call out that you can see the wrong side of the fabric. <clears throat> All right, that dog is so cute. All right, here it is in a, another version. Really beautiful print there. It looks like it's all one view. And you can see here that the flounce is actually showing to the front. The wrong side is actually showing to the front. So just keep that in mind. You may not have even noticed that unless I called it out, but it's one of those things that I like to know about before I pick fabrics, just so I know what I'm getting into. But it is really pretty. Maybe, if anything, just a little bit wide across the front on her. Um, this version especially. The other two I didn't notice it as much. But this one especially seems really kind of pulled away from her body here. Also up on her neckline too. Which, again, I did not notice in the other views. So I would like to know if this is the same size bodice as the other ones. All right, and then there's the back again. All right, and he, finally, here are our line drawings. At the very end, you can kind of tell what's going on here. She did use more, I think, um, structured fabrics than I would have. I think you could, I mean, maybe because she wanted to keep the structure of that skirt um, in her versions, you know, make sure that it kind of like created more of like a little teacup situation. Um, but I think you could go lighter weight with this too, like even into the Rayon Shally category. Um, and it'd still be really, really beautiful. 
All right, so here are the, your, what is this, yardage? Materials list in yards. Why in the world would you need, oh, 2.5. I thought that said 25. It's just really small, and whenever I zoom in like this, you lose, like, half the charts. So, um, here are the finished garment measurements. We can barely see them, but finished garment-wise, it looks like there's about five inches of ease in the bust. That's kind of a lot. That's why we're getting so much kind of, like, gaping <clears throat> and pulling away from the body. Um, so, you could probably size down, um, especially the more structure that your fabric gets. The waist has eight uh, inches of ease, which is why there's that elastic to kind of pull it all in. That makes sense. And then the hip has six inches of ease. Also makes sense for like a, you know, kind of like a A line teacup shaped uh, skirt. And then you have your links here. What is being chopped off the bottom? Whoop, go back. Oh, nothing. Okay. So we can barely, barely get the whole um, chart in there, but we get it all. So that's good. All right, so that's a little bit of how, like, the lay of the land with her pattern listings. There's not any information that I wish I would have gotten. So I think it's all included there. Um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, I think the design of this dress itself isn't that revolutionary. You know what I mean? Like, We've seen this before, right? So nothing to get too, too excited about design-wise. But everything about the site and the listing does seem well thought out. So that gives me good hope that the instructions of the patterns would actually emulate that as well. <clears throat> All right. So now we are at the Ludlow Romper. Also want to point out so far, the last two patterns have been $16. So they are in like the mid-price range for indie patterns. Um, I consider anything like under nine to be like in the affordable category that 10 to 20 is the mid range. And then anything above 20 is just expensive. And there are, there are 20 plus dollar indie sewing patterns for sure. Um, all right. So the Ludlow is an easy fitting one piece romper that comes in two pant links with a button placket closure down the front, a cool stand up collar, winged sleeve, side seam pockets, and a matching tie belt to cinch the waist. Um, view A is the pants length, which hems to the ankle. View B is the shorts length and hems to mid-thigh. Perfect in light to medium weight cotton, linen, or silkies. All right, and then this is the same information um, for the uh, PDF. Just if you need to know how many pages each one is, you can look here. Suggested fabrics, light to medium weight woven, such as cotton lawn that is opaque. Cotton poplin, denim, chambray, viscose, chalet, linen, and linen blends. And then some interfacing and six one-inch snaps. One-inch snaps are large. No question about that. And then the same body measurement chart for every pattern. We will look at the um, finished garments measurements here shortly. But let's take a look at this pattern. So it has sort of a hidden placket. Let, I'm going to go backwards so that we can see the line drawings first and we'll get a much, much better idea of what we're dealing with. It's just really hard to tell the design details in a print that is so small and kind of all over. So uh, we have kind of this like crossover button placket that is hidden. So those one inch snaps are underneath here. Now one inch snaps Snaps are heavy, right? Like they're made from metal. So I don't know about using one inch snaps on a rayon chalet. Um, certainly on a chambray or a linen, I think that that would be okay. I, can you even, are there such thing as one inch plastic snaps? Like I have the little snaps that you put like on uh, body suits or like baby onesies and stuff like that that are very lightweight. But like the usual metal ones, I think that would be really six of them too. That would be really heavy, right? So some clarity on that would be helpful, but nonetheless, it does open up the front. This is how you get into it. It has this winged sleeve, similar to the dress we just saw, but with less like flounce to it. Um, some side seam pockets, and then you have the cuff on the pant length. Um, I can't tell if this is, that's obviously a tie. So 
underneath the tie, the tie were left off, is it just straight? That's one thing I do like that uh, Big Four does is they will give you a line drawing and just draw in the tie over here like a little rectangle and show you what it looks like without it tied. Um, so that would be nice to know, just like what is happening under here. Is there a seam? Is there some gathering built in? I didn't see any elastic in the Notion, so I'm guessing no, but um, that would be nice just to see. Here is our materials list. Um, and then the same fabrics and then finished garment measurements. We've got again, a very roomy bust, um, very roomy waist, and then only two and a, what is that? Almost three inches. Yeah. Three inches of ease in the hip. So certainly much, um, closer fitting, um, in the hip. Very roomy through here, very roomy through here, and then the hip is a little bit close fitting. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So the photos that we have are really beautiful. I mean, they're well done. Good lighting, all of that kind of stuff. The poses are nice. Hands in the pockets on a short or pant is one of my pet peeves. So we'll see if she gives us anything without a hand in the pocket so you can see how those uh, side seam pockets lay. Um, also, when you have these winged um, sleeves, you can see into the garment a little bit. Um, I have, actually, I think it's a jumpsuit where I, you have to wear a bralette under because you can see inside. Um, but that just, you know is what is required of this wide seam opening, but something to keep in mind. Okay, here it is in a solid color and the pant. So, hmm. First of all, this looks like the ease in the hip is a lot more than three inches. I mean, it looks like a lot, a lot, a lot more than that. Um, so that is a little bit concerning. And also the crotch looks a little bit low as well. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell how low the crotch is there. So something to consider would be, you know, reducing the size here. I mean, this is just very long. The proportions here are a little bit like confusing to my eye, how long it is here and then how short these legs are. It makes her legs look short. The crotch curve looks great. Still hands in the pockets. We haven't seen a picture yet without hands in the pockets. I bet this black version is going to be super chic. Also, was there a yoke in the back? Or is that just my screen? It's just my dirty screen. Okay, moving on from that. <laughs> um, yeah, this looks to be some kind of maybe even sateen. And also, is it olive green? Yeah. Okay. So those are the only pictures we are going to get. Would have loved to see a picture um, without our hands in the pockets. You know, it's just one of my things. I just, I think cause I, well, I guess this one technically doesn't, although there are hands covering everything, but um, my personal experience is that when I sew side seam pockets in a pant, um, it tends to gape open. The pocket does. So I was just curious to see if it did that on her. Now, granted, her body type is nothing like mine. <clears throat> so, and side seam pockets do tend to behave a little bit different than like angled pockets. So, there's that. I will say the shorts, well, I can't tell if the crotch length on the shorts is too long. Because it's kind of giving, well, maybe because it's not from far away enough. Like, maybe if we saw her whole leg. In the shorts, it would help. Let me just quickly flip through here again. Yeah, the photos are all cropped, except for when you get to the pants, which really highlights how long the crotch length is here. Okay, that is the Ludlow Romper. Next, we have the Mercer Top Curvy PDF Pattern. Is there a Mercer Not Curvy? No. Oh, wait. Yes. Interesting that they are so far apart from each other, but, and 
I brought this up a couple of videos ago because I was just trying to wrap my head around the concept of having your plus size patterns on a separate listing than your straight size patterns. And in a way, it felt segregating. In a way, it felt like, I don't know, it felt weird when I saw it in Big Four, but when I see it in Indie, not so much. And I couldn't really tell why it was giving me some kind of reaction when I saw it in the Big Four, maybe because they used to not do that. Um, but I don't understand why you can't have the Mercer top, and then once you get in here, you see that there's a curvy option and straight option. But then a lot of you commented and said, as curvy girls, plus size girls, you like when they are segregated like this because it, can, it makes it easier for you to see which ones have the option and which ones don't. So I get that as well. I just think there could be a better way to do it without making them separate listings. But that's just me, apparently. So we have the Mercer top. It is available in this curvy size, which we will look at what that size chart looks like. Um, and then also a straight size as well, which I assume is the size chart that we have seen in the previous two patterns. All right, Mercer top, edgy blouse. It'll give your wardrobe basics an instant style upgrade with the confidence boosting power shoulder. Um, light to medium weight woven fabrics, two versions, it has sleeveless version and then also a bracelet length sleeve with a button detail. Now, I would argue this is not sleeveless, right? I mean, that's definitely something sewn to the shoulder here. So that might be a little misleading, but facings finish the neckline and keyhole back along with a simple button with loop closure, simple narrow hem finishes the lower hem and sleeves. View A armholes are finished with bias trim. All right, suggested fabrics, light to medium weight wovens with body. Notions, a button for the neck closure, interfacing, um, some elastic for the loop, thread, bias tape, and two and three eighth shank buttons for the sleeve trim. Um, also, maybe the cuff, you could call it that. All right, here's the, <clears throat> here's the size chart here. So the other two patterns went up to her size 20. This extends to size 30. So it extends beyond the size 20. We go from 42 inch bust to 56 inch bust and a 45 inch hip up to a 59 inch hip. So much more inclusive here. This is much more representative and pretty much on target for what I would expect from a full size or a full, a plus size pattern. So good job there. I don't know why all the patterns aren't done that way, but whatever. That's, I guess, her choice. And then she also has another little link here, the Me Made Style file, which I guess shows you how to style the top, which is nice as well. All right, let's take a look at these photos. So you've got a bust dart here, but this bust dart looks really long. Like it extends beyond her bust apex. I think her bust apex is here. And we're, we've got a good inch and some change um, beyond that. So that might be something to check. You can see here, this is the sleeveless version, but I don't see how this is any different than the sleeve we just saw. And that was not called sleeveless. So a bit of an inconsistency there. Maybe this will give us a better view of that. What happened? Of that um, bus start. Um, no, not really. Not really. Okay. <clears throat> this one does though. So you can see, well, now this one just looks low. So maybe since it's such a slouchy oversized top, maybe they're long and low. I don't know. It's hard to say. Definitely something funky going on with the bus starts there. This is it untucked. Thank you so much for including a photo of it untucked so you can see how long it actually is. This one appears to hit high hip, um, which kind of just speaks to that edgy, you know, kind of boxy vibe. 
So this is the key to the Mercer top, I think. If you have this little doodad on both versions, and then one, you have a naked arm underneath, and the other version, you have this little sleeve that comes out from underneath these little winged sleeves. Can you see how that is still the winged sleeve here, and then this comes out from underneath? So I think that makes it super, super unique. It's not just like she extended this piece to make it long. It's a whole separate sleeve. Like layered under here. This is a good shot at the back with the keyhole and the little button. And then here are our line drawings where you can see that. I'm interested to see if the straight version has the darts. But very kind of sci-fi, right? Can't you see that as almost like a outer space costume <laughs> in a way? If you did it out of like different fabrics. <laughs> All right. And then here is a materials list. And finished garment measurements. So very roomy in the bust again. We've got a good eight inches in the bust here. That's, that's a lot. That is a lot of ease. Even in a boxy top. Um, the hem width, which is how she words. It's not the hip, right? Because the hip would be like the low hip. Because this is hitting at the high hip, it's not technically the same. Um, but it is the same measurement as her body measurement chart for the hip. Does that make sense? Because it's hitting higher up, it can be narrower because it doesn't have to fit over your low hip, okay? And then she didn't even include the waist, the finished waist, because it is so, I'm sure, much larger. All right, so that's Mercer Kirby. Real quick, let's go to Mercer Straight and just see if we've got a bus start, and we do not. We do not. I would be interested to know with that much ease, and I want to see how much ease is in this version too. Um, 32 finished garments, 18.7. That doesn't make any sense. Shoot, something's wrong with it, so I can't even really tell. Yeah, like something happened with the chart here. So I can't even really tell what the finished garment measurements are. Because they're all, all, clearly something's wrong with this chart here. But I was going to say, it'd be interesting to see the Kirby version without the bust darts. Because it is so roomy and so oversized. You Either you wouldn't need the bust darts at all, or if you did, they could easily be half the length that they are currently drafted, I think. Um, but that would be for you fuller, ch fuller chested girls, for you guys to, you know, mess around with that a little bit, um, either tissue fitting or on a ditto form or something like that. Okay, so now we've got a t-shirt. I mean, this must be an exceptional t-shirt for $16 because I can think of some exceptional t-shirt patterns that are free. Um, so I don't, I mean, it would take a lot for me to pay this much for a t-shirt pattern, but the perfect t-shirt pattern does exist, she claims. The Rivington is a slim fitting pullover t-shirt with classic short sleeve and two neckline choices, v-neck and crew neck. Um, stretch knits only, it will quickly become your go-to shirt, dress up or down with endless styling options. Light to medium weight stretch knits only, such as jersey, cotton, viscose, and pointel knits. <clears throat> it would have been nice to have the stretch percentage here, but I imagine from these suggestions that it's not a ton of stretch. Uh, no notions. And the pattern sizing chart is an alphanumeric chart. It still starts and ends with the same measurement. So it's not like it's more size inclusive. Um, it's just kind of bundled together. So your bust still, the smallest bust is still 32. The largest bust is still 46. All right. So we're going to look at some t-shirts here. For me, like I, 
think that when it comes to making a bomb t-shirt at home, this does have a very deep V. And you also do have that little detail of the seam here, which is a little bit hard to execute. This one may not be as bad as some that I've seen because it does have a wee bit of a curve here which makes it a little bit easier to sew. But for me, it's more about the fabric than it is about the pattern. I think you can find free t-shirt patterns all day long and the execution of them and how much you like them and wear them really depends on the fabric more than anything else. The very best t-shirt knits I've ever found come from Stylemaker Fabrics. They have cotton jerseys there that are just exceptional. Even the June and Lou that I just sewed for those pajamas, um, would be wonderful. The solids that they have there, the organic cotton jersey solids would be, make a wonderful, wonderful t-shirt. So I don't think you have to pay $16 for a t-shirt pattern. In fact, I would be a little bit upset with you if you spent $16 <laughs> on a t-shirt pattern when there are so many that are so good for free. All right, so no doubt that this is a beautiful t-shirt pattern, right? I'm not taking that away from her. And she can charge whatever she wants. It's her business. But um, I, I, I just couldn't justify that, you know. Okay, so that is the t-shirt. Now we've got the Wooster jacket. I feel like I've seen or heard of this one probably from Instagram. Loose fitting online jacket with yoke detail, front slit pockets, bracelet length sleeves, and a wide neckband. This timeless shape can be styled into many looks using the medium weight fabric you choose. All right, same description. Suggested fabrics, medium weight wovens like denim, linen, and tweed. No notions. And then our same body measurement chart. So again, I'm going to start at the end with the line drawings just to make heads or tails of what we are going to be looking at. So it looks like just like an open front cardigan jacket, right? It just has this um, uh, neck band that goes from the hem all the way around the neck. Um, this, I can't, yes, it does roll over. So that is a very interesting detail and I'm interested to see how this lays on her neck. But you've got a yoke in the front here and in the back. And then you've got these fun little slit, um, I mean, they're like design lines, but they also are pockets. And then your wide sleeve as well. All right, so let's see this on her. Oh, she has the little neck thingy, so I can't really see how it's supposed to lay, but she also did some bit of embroidery or top stitching here, which is interesting this did not appear in the line drawing, so I don't really know what that is about. And then she also did like some, you know, very obvious top stitching um, to match, to bring that all in together. Yeah, the length of it is really cute, kind of hitting, I don't know, like mid hip between the hip bones and the full hip. She called this bracelet length sleeve. This is more of a three quarter length sleeve to me. I love a boxy jacket. Like I love a boxy jacket a lot. Um, so this is like really, really speaking to me and <laughs> everything that I love. Um, I don't know the proportions of it. I just, I don't know. I have a hard time saying no to a boxy jacket. <laughs> Yeah, the, the pocket is really, really cool. And you can see, this is a great photo of the neck. You can see how that kind of like folds over, lays really high up on the nape of her neck, and then just gently hugs the curve of her neck before coming down. That's really a sign of a really well-designed neck. Her denim might be a little bit rough, a little bit sturdy. Maybe that's a better word than what I would choose. Um, and I don't know what this is. I, I still don't know why we didn't explain. I guess she didn't have enough fabric for the neckband, but uh, that can be confusing to some people, you know? Yeah, the, the, the design line here is great. I love the length of it. I love how it's a little bit longer in the back. Um, the yoke is really beautiful. You can tell here, too... 
that there is not a shoulder seam. Like the yoke from the front to the back is all one piece. So there's not an actual defined shoulder seam, which I think creates like a fun little, oh, look at all of those safety pins. Um, it creates like, um, kind of like a raglan really is what it is, right? A raglan sleeve. So, um, it would give you that same sort of shoulder accentuation as like a raglan would. Yeah, just so cool. I think this is a tweed, which is really fun. And then back to our line drawings, back to our materials list, and the measurements were on there too. So, finished garment measurements, it's oversized all over. So, you wouldn't have to worry too, too much about getting this guy to fit. All right, that's the Wooster. Now we have the Bowery sweatshirt. This is the curvy version. So again, I don't know, a $16 sweatshirt pattern? I can think of some really, really great sweatshirt patterns for half this price. Maybe not for free, but for, you know, less than 10 for sure. This is a semi-fitted sweatshirt with a set-in sleeve and mock neckline. Sleeve cuffs and waistband finish the sweatshirt with ease. Curvy sewing pattern, 16 to size 30, and fit for a D cup bust. Um, description, same fabrics. French terry, performance fleece, fleece-backed stretched cotton. Stretch knit fleece, double knit, scuba knit, velour stretch velvet woven with knit trim, which means the body is... A woven fabric and then knit trim for the cuffs and the bands. <clears throat> Notions, rib trim, stay tape. And then here's the same sizing chart we saw for the last curvy pattern. So I'm going to cut straight to the line drawings here and just see if there's anything exceptional. There isn't. It's just your standard sweatshirt and I don't know I, I, I get offering basics like that t-shirt and this sweatshirt but at that price point I want at least one option maybe more give me a shoulder flounce give me something you know something um because this is this is just basic 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 <clears throat> all right Again, it's a well-designed sweatshirt, not taking that away from her at all, but I want more for $16, and I don't think that, I don't think that that is, I don't think I'm alone in thinking that $16 is a lot for a basic sweatshirt. For not even a paper pattern, right? You don't even get a paper pattern with that. It's just the same PDF download, so. All right. There's the Bowery. And then Waverly Leggings. Let's see what these have to offer. Waverly Leggings are slim fitting, high waisted, and designed to be ultra versatile. They feature a shaped waistline finished with an elastic casing. Designed for stretch knits only, the Waverly can be paired with the bleaker sweatshirt for a casual logo with a Hudson top for an easy work from home comfort. I would have liked to have these linked just so I can easily click on them and take me to that listing, but that's just a, the web designer in me. Fabrics are stretch knits only like Jersey and spandex, elastic, one inch elastic. And then it's our straight sizing chart. And then it looks like for this one, we only get this photo and the line drawing. So she says, did she say high-waisted, right? I'm going to say that I'm not getting a high-waisted vibe. I'm getting a low-waisted vibe. Oh, I can't even see the waist. Darn. <clears throat> um, and she said that featured a shaped waistline. So it's not a waistband. I see. I see. I see. 
So given this and given the fact that our photos are not going to show us how high up these go, I, I don't really know what to make of the waist. I mean, this leggings, let's be real, make or break a legging pattern from the hip up. You know, everything else is pretty much the same from the hip down. Whether or not I like a legging is happens right here, everything. So I can't really see and I can't really tell. So, and again, there are some wonderful leggings out there for free. Um, so I, I don't know that I would be willing to spend $16 on this given so many questions I still have about the fit and design and all of that jazz. Okay, now we have the Perry Top. Designed for lightweight silkies, the Perry is a stylish zoom top for working at home. Gosh, the times we live in, right? A unique night out top or a casual day option to wear with jeans. The... Uh, has a wide neckline, puffed sleeves, and open back with crisscross detail. The neckline and back opening is finished with a half body facing, which is basically like half of it is lined. The top half is lined. And the hem and sleeves are finished with a narrow hem. Designed for lightweight silkies. Oh, yeah, we already read that. Okay. Suggested fabrics are lightweight wovens like Chalet, Crepe, and Charmeuse. No notions. Our straight size chart, and then she has a styling video for this as well. Okay. So, so, so far, some things that I really love about this are this gathered sleeve. I love this crisscross detail. I'm pretty sure you can still wear a bra with it. I love the fact that it's half lined. Um, it is a really wide neckline, though. She's not kidding about that. So in that regard, maybe you could not wear a bra because it would show here. Not, not, not so much in the back, but definitely on your shoulders. Maybe you can build one into that half lining. Very elegant. Yeah, okay, here we are at the line drawing. So you've got a basic bodice. You've got that um, gathered sleeve. Apparently, it just comes straight down into a baby hem. And then the crisscross detail in the back. So, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, you could hack this. You could easily make this yourself. This detail is nothing super difficult. It's just two tubes of fabric looped together, sewn into the seam is all it is. So, if you have a basic top, Regardless of what the neckline looks like or the sleeve looks like, find one that you love those details of and then you add a little V in the back and sew in that little, little detail. Not difficult to do. <clears throat> and then here are our finished garment measurements. Again, something's wrong with the charts because this one says a 16.5 inch finished bust and I mean, obviously that's impossible. So, um... So whatever she, I don't know if it's some like automated something or another that's creating these charts, but they're not coming out right. And then someone's not checking behind them. So basically it makes this whole section like useless, like might as well not have it, which as I know, uh, which I know is not her intention. Obviously she wants to include it, but something's happening there. So, um, 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 um. okay. So that's the Perry. I do like that design, but um, I just have so many patterns that I know I could I could hack that on my own. All right, here's the Bleaker sweatshirt, loose fitting pullover sweatshirt with a drop shoulder and ruffle details along the sleeves. The edgy basic. Now, you guys, you know I love a ruffle. Like I love a ruffle more than life itself. So obviously, I love this pattern. <laughs> Um, but let's really take a look because it's my inclination just to add all the ruffled things to my cart, no matter what. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, if you put a ruffle on it and it just makes it the cutest thing ever. I don't know. All right. So 
The neck and sleeves are finished with ribbing details and bottom edge is finished with a straight hem for a modern look. I actually really love that. Um, and I'll show you in the photos. Basically, there is um, rib knit, neck band, rib knit, wristband, but the hem is, there's no band there. Um, and so I think for those of us that are pear shaped and have like such curvy bottoms, when you have that fitted band, the sweatshirt just rides up and up and up and up and up and makes it really uncomfortable. So having kind of a straight hem there, um, I actually really like that a lot. Okay, suggested fabrics, lightweight to medium weight wovens, such as, maybe she doesn't mean wovens. I think she means knits, such as sweatshirt fleece, French terry, jersey knits. If using sweatshirt fleece, we recommend making the ruffle in a lighter weight fabric like cotton, silky, or organza. Yeah. All right. Notions, ribbing, and that's it. And then our same pattern uh, body measurement chart. All right. Let's look at the photos. <clears throat> so crew neck and then very, very, very roomy. I think this might even be a grown on sleeve. Um, like a dolman. Cute. Please show me it untucked. I just want to know how long it is. Cute detail of the ruffle detail. There's your sleeve. This could be a little bit wider, I think. Maybe if you're using the rib knit trim, you could beef that up some. Oh, there it was untucked, though. So we're getting, like, yeah, that same, like, I don't know. That's close to full hip. Closer to full hip than high. So a little bit longer, which is nice. Especially if you're going to wear it with leggings like this. And you can see that hemmed bodice. Yeah. But yeah, it is a grown on sleeve. Very roomy. Really easy to fit. Really easy to sew. Yeah, this chart measurement, this is accurate. They've got some real numbers in here. So, goodness gracious, the bust has 14 inches of ease in it. And then the hem, which is pretty close to your full hip, it has, what is that, 9 inches. So, very roomy. And if you're using something like drapier like French cherry or even, I mean sweatshirt fleece is pretty structured so it's going to stand away from your body a bunch um so you could even size down in a sweatshirt fleece but the French cherry and jersey knits would kind of fall a little bit closer to your body just based on the drape that they have so you'd have all that room but it wouldn't look as boxy so it's fun not again we're not like you know reinventing the wheel here with these designs but they are clean and chic and, you know, like basics with a twist. And I know I say that all the time that that is like my personal style. Um, and that's what a lot of these, these are. I think that they might be a little too basic with not enough of a twist. Maybe that's why I'm feeling a little bit like meh about a lot of them. They are 1000% cute, 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 cute. Don't get me wrong about that. I do like the designs a lot, but I'm just not feeling like overwhelmed. I'm not feeling called to buy a whole bunch of them. I don't know why. All right. So let's talk about the Hudson top. Uh, Relax fitting top with a mock neckline that closes with a tied bow in the back, fully lined with a sleeveless dropped shoulder. Fully lined. Okay. Let's not, let's not skip over that part. Um, designed for lightweight wovens, versatile top worn throughout the seasons. Okay, uh, lightweight wovens like cotton and cotton blends, silk, chalet, or crepe. No notions and our same straight size body chart. So we've got, how much of this can we see when we zoom in? <clears throat> kind of a lot. And if you're wondering about the grain of everything, it's some filter that she's adding to her photos. It's not your computer. It's not my computer. Um, it's some, some filter that she's got put on it, which 
very cute magazine vibe. I don't know how helpful it is in determining if I want to buy this or not, but that's what that is, if you're wondering. Okay, so it's just like a little mock neck with a tie, a little bit of a grown on sleeve. But the fully lined part, I think, is what is so interesting about it. And you can kind of see her lining here. I don't, I don't know that you need to line this. Um, uh, I live in a climate where it gets very tropical and, you know, for a top that you can wear all seasons, I don't know about lining. I think you could do, I guess, bias or baby hems. I don't know. But it is a very classic style. And then she added the bow detail to it. But I think that you would see this style top like a million different places. And I'm imagining, we'll look at the um, fabric requirements. It does not take a ton of fabric. But this is a very, very classic look that you can make out of really luxurious fabrics like silk and not break the bank. Um, because it has so few seams, you could do it out of specialty fabrics like sequins and velvets and all kinds of fun stuff. I just don't know about the fully lined part. I don't know how necessary that is. Maybe do a lining for the neck band and the tie, but then everything else, just do baby hems. And then here is our measurement chart. Oh, and here's the fabric. So you can see, I mean, depending on what size you need, less than two yards. Um, the smallest sizes is a one yard wonder. And I imagine if you left off the tie even, you could do this out of way, way, way less fabric than even what this calls for. Okay, so. And we've got eight inches of ease in the bust. And what is that? 35, six and a half-ish in the hip. So again, very roomy. Nothing she has presented so far has been fitted in any, in any way, except for maybe these shorts. <clears throat> oh, and the t-shirt. All right. So we've got Sutton underwear, which you're going to skip because I don't know how to review underwear, but it does look really pretty from here. I love all the little lingerie details and we'll leave it at that. So we've got the park night shirt, quick, uh, quick to sew yet detail rich night dress and top. Does that mean pajamas? What's a night dress if not pajama? Um, it has an easy fit with wide sleeves and a V-neck with facing and optional top stitching. The night dress skims the thigh, the top sits at the natural waist, and both feature tailored side slit details. Pairs perfectly with the Carnegie robe for cooler nights and mornings. Suggested fabrics are light to medium weight wovens like cotton poplin, chambray, silk, poly, rayon. What do we think about sleep shirts with facings? Do we think that would be comfortable still? And then interfacing and thread, but you can tell here she's also got some kind of like pico trim or something else. And then we've got a alphanumeric chart here, same as the one we saw before. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. Not a ton of pictures, but we've got our, our v-neck, our grown on sleeve, our little wide um, sleeve opening and then some kind of length. Um, oh, well that's a lot cuter than I thought. You have this beautiful little detail here. It's a slit, but it's like finished really, really, really well. Why couldn't we have done that for the neckline? You know what I mean? I guess you can top stitch the facing down. That would make it acceptable at nighttime. I just don't want something flopping around, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, really cute. I this this to me is wonderful. You don't see that. And so I guess like 
you know, when I talk about, because we look at a different pattern company every single week, right? So we see a ton of patterns and we see a ton of indie designers doing the basics. That's fine. But something as small as this is what can take it from being that like, man, I'm not having much of a reaction to it at all to being like, yeah, wow, I'm totally going to remember that. You know what I mean? Like this would be fun to sew. This would look great. It would look expensive. And it's, it's really, when you think about it, not, not that exceptional of a detail, but it makes a difference whenever you're sewing at home. All right, are we going to get to see the top? No. But one interesting thing says that the top sits at the natural waist. That's not true. If the top sat at the natural waist, it would be way, way, way up here, like a crop top. So I think that is worded incorrectly and should say that it sits at, like, the high hip even. But they both have that little detail that I love so much. Yeah, I love this. This is really, really great. Just an elevated detail that just really makes all the difference. Okay, dress, length, bust, and then the top, length and bust, 37 and a half, so somewhere around five or so inches of ease in the bust is all they're going to give us. I need a hip measurement in a dress. I just do because I'm a pair, and no matter how roomy you think the hip is, it's probably not roomy enough for me. <laughs> so um, having the hip on something that covers your hip, I think, is important. The, hip, the finished measurement of the hip is what I mean. And it's really too bad that she covered this one up so much. I would have liked to see how this lace, you know, this is clearly that slit. Maybe she explains it in the directions. I don't know, but I, I would have liked to have seen how this looks because that could be very ready to wear friendly even. All right, here's the Carnegie robe. Luxurious wrap style unisex robe with relaxed fit that comes in two lengths. There's a dressing gown length that goes to mid thigh and the lounge length hemmed to the knee. Pattern includes all the sizes, extra small to 4X. Features a neckband that can be adorned with piping or trims, a wide tie belt to cinch in the waist, side seam pockets, and wide hem sleeves, perfect for bold prints, classic cottons, or cozy soft fabrics like cotton and cotton blends, viscose silks, stretch knits okay. Notion-wise, we need some bias tape and optional lace. Yeah, this looks to be like your classic, like, hotel robe, right? Let's look at the line drawings first. Let's see if I can zoom in what we can see. Oh, bummer. That feel like that zoomed in even more than the other ones did. Um, so, but it's just got your neckband with a tie belt and drop shoulder with a sleeve. The sl this little sleeveless version is something unique. I mean, obviously you can do that to any pattern. It's not like you can't just leave the sleeve off, but you don't see it called out like this very often. So that is interesting to me. I hope she made a, oh, please. I hope that she made a version of that um, so you, I can kind of see what it looks like on a body. But yeah, that in this cozy little French cherry. Here it is, maybe in a cotton or something. A little bit of silky, and she even added this lace trim here. That's really pretty. <clears throat> yeah, the trim here, also very nice detail. Just gives a little something something, you know? Here is some kind of like, I guess, flannel. Were those belt carriers? <clears throat> Actual belt carriers. Love that. Do you, the guys in your life, do they wear robes? I don't think Dan has ever worn a robe, even in a hotel. He's just not a robe guy. 
I think he'd rather just get dressed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, so robe. And then we have this Linux set. Super sweet pajamas. A versatile and luxurious loungewear collection that you can mix and match to make your own set. A chemise and cami feature a classic v-neck or perfect base for lace trims. Tap pants. Never heard of tap pants. Have an elastic waist and side seam pockets. The play suit offers the best of both in a pullover style with an elastic high waist. Light to medium weight wovens, cotton and blends, viscose and silk, stretch knits are okay. Rings and sliders for adjustable straps. Elastic for the waistband. And then optional lace. And then our same straight size chart. And then she has some styling videos too. All right. So yeah, your classic again, little silky set. I love all the lace trim. It really, that really does elevate it and add such a little something, something. Oh, the whole back is lace. I was not expecting that, but I mean, why not? D where's this? I want to make this too. Does is there a pattern for that? Yeah, really pretty. Oh, and then she made it into like a ready to wear top. Love that. Yes, super cool. Here for this. This is the dress version, the chemise. And it looks like it came with, it has a tie belt. I wish we could have seen that on. Wait, what is going on here? This is that robe we just saw. Are these the shorts? Because that's not the top, is it? I don't know what this is. Okay, so we've got the dress, which I would have liked to have seen on. I also want to know, is any of this bias cut? I'm thinking no. Um, and also the back of the top is not all lace. So that's confusing. Then there's this play suit, aka romper, which you guys know I'm here for that. And then you have the shorts. So, yeah, the photos are a little confusing. I want to make sure that if... You know, I want to make a full lace back top. I mean, I guess her point is that you can make the whole top out of lace if you want. Like, lace is fabric too. Um, but she just didn't call it out in the line drawings. Okay, that, that makes enough sense to me. Um, and then the dress, and then the romper, and then the shorts. I guess, yeah, those black and white shorts are what she was showing in that other photo. So you really don't need a lot of fabric at all. I mean, even the play suit, the whole play suit is less than one and a half yards. The dress is one yard. That whole dress is one yard. I guess so. Huh. All right. Well, I got a lot of silky fabrics I need to find something to do with. So maybe this is going to be it. And she's right, it would be fun to play around with like the lace trim and everything. Okay, now we've got a Lexington pajamas. Did she just have like a whole loungewear collection released? Is that what's happening here? There's a lot of pajamas. Um, the Lexington pajamas have a timeless, sporty, 90s inspired silhouette, yet with a feminine vibe, make two piece PJs or a nightshirt. Um,. The trousers and shorts have a relaxed fit with elastic waist, and the trousers have optional elastic at the lower leg openings. Side pockets are a must-have. Uh, the top and nightshirt have relaxed fit with a notched collar, button front, and short and long sleeve options. The shirt hems to the hip and the nightdress to the knee. Light to medium weight wovens, cotton and blends, flannel, silks. Elastic interfacing and buttons. And then our same size chart, okay. So yeah, your classic notched button front collar. We've got a patch pocket. She did some embroidery here. You can see just how like relaxed this is. Drop shoulder, falls off her shoulder a lot. Um, there's a facing here. 
and then there's the short that she added the embroidery to as well. These shorts are elastic, but they also have this little like curved pocket, not a side seam pocket. Super cute, love a gingham. There she is with a quilt. More details of the shirt and the shorts. Yep, nice high-waisted short. The For what it's worth, the crotch length on those look fine. Lots of photos. Oh, here's the pants. When this one she added lace down the side, and this is that elastic at the ankle. Again, not entirely sure how I feel about sleeping in that. Do we like that ankle? I don't know. I'd have to give it a go. Um, and then I would have liked to have seen this too, but oh well. Um, so yeah, really cute. And I'm, th I'm just kind of thinking here, but you could probably also make this into like a ready to wear shirt. You could certainly make these into ready to wear pants, you know, without the lace trim up the side elastic waist shorts we see those all the time in the stores and then a button front shirt dress so yeah this is definitely like a she's you know made it out of fabrics that are pajama like but you could wear it out too here are all of the fabric requirements and your measurements Finished measurements, yeah, really roomy bust with 11 inches of ease. Even, what, what is this? The hip dress has 7 inches of ease, so that's plenty. And then the bottoms have a little bit less, obviously, because you want those to be a little bit more fitted. Um, but still very roomy all around. Yeah, those are nice as well. That seems to me like because you have the top and the dress and the shorts and the pants, lots of options um, for the same $16. All right. Thomas pants, pull on pant with a classic paper bag, high waist detail. Choose between two lengths, city short or ankle length or make them both. Okay. Yes, obviously. Um, description side pockets make these practical in a tie belt and wide belt loops give a hint of style. Wear it with the Mercer, a slim tank, or a loose-fitting button-down. Light to medium weight woven, such as cotton poplin, chambray silk, polyester, and blends with tinsel. Those are interesting fabric requirements for a short. No twill, no chino, nothing like that. I guess maybe that's what she's referring to with blends. And then all you need is elastic, so they just pull on. There's not, yeah, they just pull on. Okay, okay, got it. Got it, got it. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with paperback waist pants or shorts. I love how they look on everyone else except for me. <laughs> and I think it's because my waist is the narrowest part of my body. And when you have the paperback waist, it adds width there. So it's like the part of me that's supposed to be the smallest actually ends up looking just as big as the rest of me. And then I kind of lose my shape. The only way I would ever wear paper bag waist is with a super fitted t-shirt like this. But these do have these really nice wide belt carriers. I like that detail. I like the slant pocket as well. I was trying to get a good view of the crotch length. Again, it feels a little bit long. Like I'm imagining an inch or so too long the city short length is like the bermuda short length um is cool i think it's not something you see often you know this really really long inseam in a short but i don't know i kind of feel like it should make a comeback i think we should you know i don't know i i don't like i don't not like them as much as I used to. Before I would have been like, oh my God, that's what my mom would wear, you know? But now I'm kind of, maybe because I'm like closer to her age when, <laughs> when I would say that. Um, 
Anyways, I would have liked to see this ankle length, this cigarette pant length too. Um, but yeah, the paper bag is tough for me. It's tough for me to love that because I know that I just don't feel, it doesn't feel, oh God, I'm going to say the word flattering. I don't even know what that word means anymore, but it doesn't make me feel my best. So, but if you were into the paper bag and if you've got like a figure that you like the paper bag in, these don't look bad. Again, they're very simple. It's just an elastic waist short, really, um, with an extended hem. Um, but these details, like the like the belt carriers and the slant pockets, are nice. You know what we didn't see? I'm going to look through the pictures again. This is what makes me also think that they're a little bit long in the rise. Because when she sits down, obviously she has to bunch them up a bunch. That makes me feel something's up with the crotch. But I was going to say, looking for photos without her hand in the pocket, not really seeing that. And also, I don't think we got any photos of the back. Yeah. And the back of a high-rise paper bag waist can be diapery. So that would have been nice to see. Just because they're not all like that. Just some of them are like that. Um, so it would have been nice to see kind of where hers fall in that category. Okay, what else do we have? Where are we? We are at the Bowery sweatshirt, the straight size. We already looked at the Mercer. Oh, here is that turban. Remember when I said, can we get a pattern for that? Well, yes, we can. The Madison turban. Love that. Um, make it a stylish fabric to take your outfit to the next level or make it in soft mulberry silk and wear it as you sleep to protect your hair from breakage and wake up bedhead free. Pleats create the shape and opening is finished with elastic and a small knot trim. I love this. Oh, only a few photos, but here you can see how it, how it comes together. You could even um, maybe make it out of a waterproof fabric and then wear it in the shower to like a shower cap. That could be cool. And then here's an interesting photo of the cutting layout. So she kind of gives it all away. It's basically a hood with a tab. And then some kind of intricate like nipping and tucking. Um, one size... Eight inches tall, 20 inches, depending on elastic length is how wide the bottom is. I would give that a go. I would give that a go. Maybe we'll include that for um, Sew Together. One of the months is accessories. That could be a fun one to throw in there. All right, we've got the Union Bag. We're not going to spend too much time on these accessories, but you can see here the shape of it. Um... Farmer's Market, Plastic Freestyle, Sheet Carry-All to the Beach and Beyond. Mini size is adorable. Hold your wallet and keys. All right. Yep, that is mini. Or you have the big one. The mini is really cute. Look how cute. That's really sweet. What is this? Where's this sweatshirt? Where are these pants? This just looks like a cropped version of that one with the little uh, strappy detail in the back, honestly. <coughs> but either way. Okay, cute little bag. You can see the line drawings here. Zippered pocket, interior pocket, or contrast fabrics. And then you could probably even buy the handles, like and get leather handles, and that would be... or faux leather handles and that would be even more elevated all right then that's it everything else is classes and um so with me's that she's charging for that's interesting I've always wondered when that would happen and who would be the first to do it it looks like it's her because these things take time guys I I am with her on charging for them it, it takes a lot um and then she has a sewing planner as well all right so that is sewing and the city. What did we think? 
I think you guys have a pretty good idea of where I stand on these. Um, mostly with just the value. That's really where I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around them. But she is allowed to and has every right to charge whatever she wants because she's the only one that knows how much work goes into them, how much time went into them. I mean, who knows? Maybe it is just a t-shirt like everything else we've ever seen, but the, the instructions are unlike anything we've ever seen before. You know what I mean? So that's what makes hers worth $16 where others are being given away for free. No one would know until they started to sew them. But design wise, options wise, um, size inclusivity wise, in terms of how many options are available to the plus size girls, I'm not getting $16. But again, that's just what I have placed. That's that's my own sort of like uh, life experience, sewing experience, all of that going into this. And she's coming from somewhere else. Um, so no, I'm not dissing her for charging whatever she wants for her pattern. She can do that. That is perfectly fine. I don't know that I am going to be able to spend $16 on a lot of these. That's all. But design wise, they are cute. They are basics with a twist. There's a pattern with a ruffle, which you know, I love. Um, but I think the standouts for me really are the pajamas and the loungewear. I think that those are unique and something we haven't seen um from a lot of pattern designers especially indies especially done in a way that is special and unique and you know elevated so those are my thoughts but i would love to hear what you guys think leave your comments in the comment section below i have linked to last week's first impression friday which was the mccall's early spring I think. Um, so I've linked that here in the end slate. Just tap the bottom right of your corner and it'll take you right to that video. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye!